A million more people in Massachusetts became eligible for the coronavirus vaccines today. Residents between the ages of 55 and 65 and those with one specific medical condition. And two weeks from now, everyone 16 and older in the state will be able to start signing up for appointments. At the same time, vaccine hesitancy is receding across the country, with just 20 percent saying in a new poll that they either won't get a vaccine or will only get the shot if they're required to do so. Skepticism has been falling for most demographics, and recent data has shown that racial gaps are closing too. But there's still some fear across the board, particularly among Republicans, for example, one in four of whom say they definitely won't get the vaccine, the highest of any other demographic, with GOP men far higher. And in recent months, hesitancy has declined among black Americans, but local leaders and public figures have been speaking out to address lingering concerns, including the Boston Celtics Shamrock Foundation, which recently held a discussion with medical experts called Spread the Health, a forum on the COVID-19 vaccine and healthcare mistrust in the black community, which included my next guest, Celtics forward, Grant Williams. Grant, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for having me on. So uh, I know you're about to do a public service announcement for the state, for the public health department. You've been outspoken about the vaccine. Why did you decide to speak out? Honestly, the biggest reason was because I felt like it was the safest route possible for us to get back now into normal, but also to protect the, the people that we care about. Uh, my grandparents received the vaccine, my mother, my father, uh, my brother. So uh, we are just trying to not only take the next step so we can move forward in the future to not only help this economy, but also help everyone around, but also protect and be safe because COVID is, I've seen it affect uh, many other, many people close to my heart, uh, whether it was with illness, with death, or even um, with symptoms that just didn't seem like they were necessary or, or wanted by any means. Mm -hmm. Were you, was there a period at the beginning of this vaccine discussion where you yourself experienced some hesitancy or were you all in all along? I was definitely hesitant at a point because for me, it was always something that I just wanted to be informed about. It's something that I need, needed to educate myself on. And then next to you know, as I educated myself, I learned that as uh, more and more um, people got vaccinated, it was becoming more and more likely that I would too because um, it was just a necessary thing that I felt like would help uh, not only my community that I'm that I'm part of, but also um, this world that we're in. Who do you think people who are hesitant most want to hear from? Do they want to hear from people like them, their peers? Do they want to hear from the Dr. Fauci's or leaders? Who are the most convincing messengers, in your opinion, Grant? I believe the most convincing messengers are the people that are closest to you, the people that are directly affected by you. Because if um, you had a grandparent or a mother or a brother who got struck by COVID and, and, were to, and God forbid, passed away or, or had a lingering effect afterwards, that's when you become more likely to truly commit and get the vaccine. So I feel like people that have similar not only backgrounds, but also either ethnicities or uh, class, uh, social class, economic class, they hear from one another and they say and they encourage getting the vaccine. I believe that uh, as time will go on, we will all be vaccinated as well as be committed to the future. You know, Danny Ainge, who uh, for the people at home who may not know is the president of the Boston Celtics, acknowledged the other day that there were a few of your teammates, he didn't identify them, obviously, who uh, weren't convinced they should get vaccinated. I'm not going to ask you names, don't get nervous. But what do you say to a teammate, somebody who's a peer? probably in their 20s like you are. A lot of 20-year-olds feel invincible. What do you say to one of your teammates when you hear, or somebody in the league who you're friendly with, when you hear that they're in the either hesitancy or just say no category? The first thing I ask is why and what's their concern by the vaccine. From there, I then would educate or even inform them on why it would be beneficial to receive the vaccine. And then actually I would just tell them my experience. Um, for me, I've, I've had my first shot. I haven't had any symptoms, nor have I really uh, been affected by it. We will see after the second shot how I feel, and I'll give them the same pointers. But um, I feel like uh, the real hesitancy is they're looking around for others to do it before they do. That's one of the biggest things 
uh, of the vaccine is they're afraid that necessarily they become ill or they'll become sick or even like there's conspiracies and all that. I think that that's the biggest issue and that we have to just educate those around us and also uh, encourage others to uh, take the first step and take a leap because um, it's something that we that put us into a crisis, put us into a pandemic, and uh, we're trying to bounce our stuff out of it. You know, we've done a lot of shows about vaccine hesitancy here. And early on, as I said, the numbers are receding, which is good. Uh, I'm sure you know as well, if not better than I, that the demographic group that uh, were most reluctant, most hesitant, were people of color, particularly black Americans who knew about what happened in Tuskegee, who knew about right. Henrietta Lacks and all that uh, uh, stuff. I know that the Celtics have a pretty deep commitment to racial equity when the league uh, adopted this racial equity program, the whole league, shortly after George Floyd was murdered. Not only did the Celtics participate, but they upped the ante big time, far more than the minimum contribution. I think somewhere in the $25 million range. What does that mean to players? Does that, what kind of, what does that mean to you and your teammates that the organization is putting their money where their mouth is on something so important in this country? The best part about it is, is not only just the money, but they're truly committed um, with their social justice program and being fully aware of everything going on in this community. And it reassures us. It makes us feel confident in not only the organization, but the fact that the team has our back and has our best interests at heart. So in all honesty, when I figured out that they were committing that dollar amount, as well as creating a whole social justice plan for the Boston community, I've decided to take become fully involved and whatever is needed of me, I tried my best to, to commit that or even be there for, for any type of event they have. So um, in all honesty, it just makes the Celtics franchise even more amazing than it already is with the culture that they have on the court, but also off with not only Bill Russell and all the history in the past. And by the way, Russell has also done a PSA. You'll be joining a pretty important group of people, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Bill Russell, the greatest player ever lived in my estimation. Before you go, an unrelated question, if I can. You mentioned your mother getting the vaccine. She works at NASA. Is she an engineer I read at NASA? Is that correct? Electrical engineer, correct. How excited was she by the Mars landing? Oh, she was, she's been sending me emails about everything. She <laughs> tries to keep me informed, whether it's not only with NASA, but also SpaceX in terms of uh, all the different things that are, are going to happen in the future. Uh, I know they've been working for commercial travels to space for the longest. So uh, there's a lot of exciting things to come. And I think that it's a bright future ahead. Well, tell her uh, congratulations and congratulations to you, Grant. It's great you're doing this and good luck with, on the court and off the court as well. Appreciate your time. I appreciate you having me on. Thank you. To watch the full Spread the Health Roundtable discussion with Grant, Taco Fall, and members of the healthcare community, visit CelticsUnited.com slash vaccine.